Ladies and gentlemen, Silent Mike back with another video, and today we are going to talk about the recent episode of Joe Rogan, who had uh, a guy I know for a very long time, Robert Obers, um, world's strongest man, competitor, insane athlete, insane presser, insane strongman, um, and they chatted about a variety of topics, but the one, of course, that pertains to us that absolutely went viral is that Robert in the video says you should not do deadlifts. He basically says that if your goal is to get better at the deadlift and you're deadlifting for deadlift's sake, go ahead. And then he talks about his experience playing college football, uh, obviously being world's uh, strongest man competitor and coaching football that uh, at the highest levels, strength and conditioning, um, Coaches and athletes across the board, and he mostly just said football, um, will do a hand clean, power clean, uh, and no deadlifts will be found. Basically saying that the risk to reward of the deadlift, uh, and I believe he mentions the lower back injury rate, um, is too high to get the benefit, or again, the risk reward is just not worth it for you. And of course, we got a hot take. Uh, you know, th a bunch of things come to my mind. You know, I've deadlifted for a very long time to get better at deadlift, and I've also deadlifted for a little bit shorter amount of time in my early 20s just to get better at basketball. Uh, I was squatting, deadlifting, doing a bunch of strength training uh, in hopes to go back and, and, and play college basketball again um, as a base of my strength training routine. And there are some things that are true with um, everything we do. Uh, anything in the gym, any athletic sport, strongman, especially basketball, football, the risk to reward may just not be there in general. Uh, you know, there's a high injury rate in all team sports, any contact sports, any lateral sports, uh, and there's also a decent um, injury rate in all strength sports. Uh, powerlifting actually being the least, if I'm not incorrect. We just recently had uh, Eric Helms on 50% Facts, and he said there's a study done on the injury rates from weightlifting, strongman, powerlifting, uh, as well as team sports uh, and bodybuilding. And the lowest is bodybuilding, and then I believe next is powerlifting, which is like 2% or something of that nature, or two out of a, uh, a thousand, don't quote me. Um, and then the higher rates were actually strongmen and weightlifting. So um, to say in just blanket statement anything is just, I guess, what bugs me. Um, because the truth is, once you gather a, a, an, enough knowledge, enough experience in multiple categories, that there is just no black and white in this. And we've talked about that a lot with you know technique, um, nutrition. There are some rules with everything we do. Um, but there's no fine line drawn in the sand with everything we do because the example that deadlifts are wrist reward not good enough for your back uh, and then showing the example of power cleans and a hang clean um, which is obviously yes the load is less but the hip hinge is still there the explosive movement plus the rack position there's just as many injuries if not more that are possible doing those movements um, Second week of me doing power cleans, I jammed my wrist so bad uh, I couldn't sleep at night. It was hurting. And is that an injury? No, it was just hurt. Um, but just that one sam sample for what you guys, um, the examples I'm bringing out. The other main thing that pops in my head is at every college, um, one, I don't know because I haven't been to everyone, but I'd imagine they're doing um, some kind of press, a squat, a back barbell back squat, uh, and then the hang clean or power clean for the majority of team athletes. Uh, and we could easily point to the squat being just as um, potentially dangerous as the deadlift in a, a variety of factors. Obviously, the low back, legs, knees, um, ankles, especially with the deadlift, the squat, the power clean, these more complex movements that you load heavier, um, if they're not taught properly with proper technique, proper supervision, as well as proper programming, um, then of course, the injury rate's gonna go up for any athlete. And of course, maybe the risk to reward is not there because we want you sacking the quarterback if you're a linebacker, running the football if you're a running back, and if you're injured from lifting, that's not gonna help. What we want is everything in the gym to be an accessory, to supplement your athleticism, your strength, and maybe some uh, injury prevention um, or, or lower the risk of injury by getting a little bit stronger, a little bit more mobile in the gym so that you can have a, a longer, more high-performing uh, career on the field, on the court, on the baseball diamond, etc. Now, I think the biggest factor in all of it is proper loading, um, proper technique, and also proper supervision. Having a good coach to cue you the right things. When you have good form, 
Yes, you can still get hurt with hypothetically the most perfect technique in all these lifts, um, but the rate does go down. Uh, and from my experience, um, I've talked to some really, really good strength coaches. Uh, shout out to Joe Ken, who's you know NFL strength strength and performance coach of the year for the uh, North Carolina uh, or the Carolina Panthers, um, and as a variety of other ones, my boy Ramsey at the Sacramento Kings, who are very, very high level, very intelligent, very well thought out planned coaches. Uh, and I've also seen and talked to some that maybe aren't as uh, well thought out, uh, experienced or knowledgeable in the case. Uh, and they may have, you know, some of their athletes with improper technique, uh, no real guidelines or programming. So they're just maxing out all the time. Um, and of course the risk is gonna go up there. Uh, the last factor that I wanna talk about is variations. Um, we just blanket statement deadlift and blanket statement um, squat and blanket statement press. But the thing is, is with athletes, depending on the athlete, depending on the sport, depending on their build, their mobility, their injury, their past injuries, et cetera, et cetera, we have so many different variations. And I think that every athlete does need to do some kind of squat, some kind of hip hinge or deadlift, if you want to call it, um, and then some kind of press. And what those might be and what they may look like are different, but there's a million variations. You know, with a really taller athlete or a less mobile athlete, maybe we do something from a block, maybe we're doing some sumo, maybe we're doing uh, a trap bar elevated. Uh, maybe we're loading with bands, uh, a little bit more band weight than uh, straight weight uh, to allow them to have a safer, uh, safer, more comfortable, better technique starting position uh, while the load is lighter and then the load will obviously get progressively heavier as you pull on the band. Um, there's a lot of variations and I can't say exactly which obviously because I would need to know what athlete or an example that I'm talking about. So I'm just throwing out ideas um, of ways that someone would still hip hinge or deadlift uh, and still make a lot of progress with the triple extension. My argument, which I've talked about many times in this video too, uh, would actually be counter to that where I think the weightlifting movements, which are arguably the most technical strength and conditioning movements, the clean and jerk, power clean, whatever you want to say, and snatch, um, the power clean in particular, or the hang clean, are the most popular among a lot of strength and conditioning coaches or just old school football players, I think are so highly technical and can easily be replaced with a loaded throw, a kettlebell swing, um, even just like a clean pull or snatch pull where you don't have to worry about the upper body mobility uh, or the sheer force of snatching and grabbing a, a bar over your head where again, they're not trying to be weightlifters, they're just trying to get better at their sport and you can get triple extension from a clean pull, a proper clean pull or a snatch pull holding onto the bar and obviously load it pretty dang heavy or a, a loaded throw, um, plyos, etc. And obviously all of these um, you know, periodized and layered well would be optimal for most, but not all athletes are capable of doing every movement in the gym. So that's where coaching, uh, strength and conditioning adjustments come into play. Now, is deadlifting for everyone? I think for the average person, uh, a deadlift is a great idea. We've been talking about athletes and things of that nature, the risk to reward. And I think obviously the risk for a professional athlete and things obviously goes higher because if you can't play your sport, you get injured or you're tweaked or you're not performing at a high level, you don't get paid. And so um, your job's out and who knows you know, the responsibilities you have with that, um, no income. For the average person, I think the deadlift is you know, top of the food chain of what we need to focus on your, um, you know, when you talk about functionality, don't love that word, um, but you're training a large group of muscles, you're training um, movements that you may do in regular life, and I'm not the guy to say like, you have to deadlift 225 pounds so you can pick up your three-year-old. Is that correct? Kind of, um, but not really. Uh, but just moving in a hip hinge and a squat and a press, a couple variations of a row for the average person will, I believe, um, be the overall best for athleticism, the best for everyday life, and the best in terms of longevity, and the best in terms of aesthetics if you get a proper program uh, and nutrition and start uh, going down that road. Are there a risk to everything we do? There's a risk to everything we do. Riding a bicycle, I fell the other day, jammed up my wrist. Are you going to tell me the risk or reward of riding my bicycle to the gym or around town running errands is not worth it? That's on an individual basis, I believe. Um, I think that it is worth it for me, and I think it is worth it for many to start to ride a bicycle, to get some cardiovascular conditioning, to get outside, to see nature, rather than driving your car 10, 15 minutes away. Uh, and I believe the similar is with the deadlift when you're talking about the average uh, gen pop, 
talking about people trying to get stronger, trying to feel good in the gym, trying to build a little bit of muscle and also functionality in their life that may turn into the weekend warrior sport. It may just turn into being a mom. It may just be you going straight to the couch afterwards, but you got in that work and trained a large muscle group. Those are my thoughts on the deadlifts and why everyone should deadlift. If you guys like this type of video, comment below what topic you want me to cover next. New vlogs, training vlogs, all on the way. I appreciate you. Sound the mic. I'm out of here.